on business. Hey, a box of paint, hi. Hey Mikey! Hello, hello! Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this set of uh, vintage technical pens that are about as old as I am, if I am to believe the, uh, the this paper here that says 1984. As far as I, as far as I can tell, they've never been used. That's some 40 year old ink. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I would put this in the pen. Oh no, it's definitely weird. But um, I have I have more recent. Yeah, it's still liquid, but it. I don't know if you can see. It's sedimented weird. Like you see all the the sediments that have deposited. Like I'm definitely gonna test it out, but not in technical pens because it's full of. It's full of particles and hard bits that will clog it for sure. <laughs> but I'm just trying to decide what size to ink up because I don't think it's useful to have all sizes inked up. I have a 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. I think I'll try the, the biggest one. 'm popped in my head whenever the direction for filling open oh all 
right, so I have um, Ultra Draw. <laughs> uh, but this one is Ratring, so it's not quite, it's not by Kohinoor or Reptograph, so maybe not this one, even if it's probably similar, but uh, not the brown one. So I'm gonna put this one, I guess. It says Repidograph on it, should be fine. Pretty sure these have never been used, but there seems to be some sort of a perhaps like dust or residue in there that I feel I should probably remove. So, uh, how are you guys doing? get this right you feel the markers well these are uh, technical pens so I don't think marker is the right word for them they have a, a really precise needle point which is a, a like a small metallic tube and I think these technically they only work really good if you keep them perfectly perpendicular to the paper and uh, the ink bottles are designed to make it easier to put the ink in the little cartridge here, so. I don't understand how this little cartridge can be so full of uh, crap. <laughs> I want to love my technical pen so much, but we are not friends. How, how so? Sorry. Ugh. Which technical pens do you have? I thought it was a good source for refillable fine liners, and they are not the same. Yeah, no, definitely not. But did you get did you get a set of um, Rapidograph, or did you get a different? Just in case. My smallest one needs a lighter to work if you leave it from. Oh, really? You have to heat up the, the tip? How fine is it? If you like uh, fine liners but would like a 
a set that you can refill. Perhaps you need to look into the Copic ones that you can buy refills and nibs and all that. So I don't know if you can see my key, but the at least the bottle is well made to be able to pour the ink precisely without making a mess. a set of the auto graphic liners that are boil point and I'd love to be able to refill them. Do you use like uh, microns or any kind of like felt tip fine liner? fountain pen work well enough on not paper so that's cold press right what do you call them there's not what's the other one <laughs> Nothing. You really have to keep these straight. Oh, that's nice. Once my last set of felt tips ran out, I started using my dip pen and fountain pens more often. That's a good idea. I really do love the Unipen brush tips, but my set has been going for over three years, so that's a really long time. Yeah, definitely. I have some old, old, old uh, fine liners from like 25 years ago. Okay, I'm not using them throughout, but they've survived, survived for 25 years and they haven't dried out. Oh, that's, that's kind of really fun to use. <laughs> such a nice even line and it flows so nicely they don't make them like they used to <laughs> Uh, the only thing I don't know is uh, how you're supposed to store these. Are you supposed to store them upright? Dang, that's a nice line. Do they say on this paper? They mention how to clean it. How to get it serviced. Filling. Okay. don't say. I'll have to ask Google about that. So I 
some do shrink on their side, but also if they leak, it's a nightmare. They shouldn't leak though. Uh, yeah, I can I can fully see the nightmare, but I mean, Google says. Oh, thank you for checking. Maintenance advice for technical pens to store silver cap and lid horizontally or put in pen station. Nib and cap should be cleaned from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why that makes me laugh, but I've been trying to clean my, um, I have another uh, different technical pen, it's a Rapido Sketch, and I think these are designed that you can still use them at an angle, rather than having to be completely perpendicular to the paper, but I had put some brown ink in there, this one, and it, it, like dried out <laughs> I forgot about it and I was like oh shit so I've been trying to figure out how to wash it but it's not completely like ready for re-inking yet I'm gonna re-ink it with black ink so I think I'm gonna sketch something see if I can ink it on watercolor paper with that pen and I'm gonna go back to the sketches from last week of Iceland. I haven't used my fountain pens in the longest time. Most of them are from the Olivager catalog. What is that? I haven't been writing in my journal for a long time because I think it would most I would mostly complain and have a breakdown. Well, I mean, if that's a way to get this stuff out, that's a good way to do it. But I mean, if you don't feel like it, that's fine too. When I'm writing for a long period, I hold my pen between my pointer, pointer, and middle finger. How, how, like this? I don't know. When I write, I'm usually like this, but for a technical pen, I would use my little finger as a stabilizer if possible and just It feels really stable because the pen is resting on this bit here and then you have the, the fingers on each, each, each side and then the thumb. I, I do death grip too. <laughs> Which is why I try to ink with, um, you know, fountain pen and all that. I feel like they make you death grip a bit less, but not always. And I finally figured out how to um, make my dip pens kind of uh, comfy to hold. So I need to play with that a bit more. I was super busy last week with the commissions, so I didn't have much time for play. And also I had a video to do, because it was sort of a semi-sponsored video. But yeah, if I'm if I'm like if I get a, a pen that is really flowy, it tends to be less death grippy because you don't. First of all, it's a pen, so there is no need to control the lightness of the pressing on the paper. It's all gonna be black line, and then um, you can't really erase. And you don't have to worry about sharpening it and all that, so... There are some letters that just naturally need to flow together and some that need to be... Yep, yep, yep. Definitely. I mean, all, all three of us are somewhat close in age. So we all learned cursive in school, right?
In French, they call it a uh, lettre attachée, which is basically like attached letters. Nowadays, when I write, it's a mix of <laughs> cursive, uh, standalone letters, mistakes. <laughs> Like sometimes your brain is just a couple of letters ahead and uh, decides that it's time to put the, those letters in, even if you're not really at that point yet. So it makes for a really weird uh, <laughs> writing. I only realized last year that when I write the, the it's only two letters. That the H is H with line. So do you write it, uh, do I have a pencil? Do you write it like, like that? It feels like something like stenographers would do. I don't know if you can see for a second. Huh. Sounds practical. I'm not confident about tons of things, but I do like my handwriting. I saw your handwriting when you sent me paints, and I really, it's quite nice. on the cards for drawing today. Uh, I think I'm gonna draw, like, if you guys remember from last stream, I did I did these uh, thumbnails of drawings based on the Iceland book. So I think I'm gonna draw an, another one, and I'm gonna try inking it with this pen. Hopefully it works out. <laughs> It's been forever. <laughs> How have you been?
Hey, so good to see you. I hope you are all well. I've been mostly well, but chaos reigns a bit here. Has for some time. Is this something you can uh, elaborate on? Or uh, I mean, it's fine if you can't. It could be super private stuff. I'm gonna grab my water bottle. Oh, I can, it's just so many things, good and bad. Latest chaos that has taken all my little surplus is that Luis has been sick and he and Francesca fought again. So I have to rebound them again. Oh no. Well, I'm glad to hear that they're, they're still around. It's a bit of a bummer that they are still so chaotic together. to feed the panthers. <laughs> How are they doing? Took six weeks and we're only back to normal for like two nights. Ugh. Six weeks, that's a really long time. They're still around but I will probably have to think about having a bun upstairs and one downstairs. Maybe new mates. Does that mean double the number of bunnies? Because that, that sounds like fun. <laughs> I mean, assuming things go well. But fit bill for three or four bunners. Is it is it particularly expensive for bunnies compared to other pets?
precisely assuming things go well. I cannot imagine opting to introduce two more bunnies in the equation and it they, they still won't bond. You're like, ah, why? Bear and Amy are good. They are annoyed that we haven't been in the garden today. <laughs> but I've got weed crash germinating. Oh, that's lovely. Aww. It can be. They are considered an exotic. And when they get sick, it is usually an absolute time set. Ugh. having cats sometimes. Aww. Would you consider getting cats again? I was surprised by how, how common bunnies are in the UK. How common are they, would you say? I'm so sorry. So many of my friends have had them. I don't think I know anyone personally who's had a bunny. I babysat uh, kids when I was much, much, much younger. They had a bunny, but that's basically the extent of my um, Regarding cats, the reason I even had bunners in the first place is that we are not allowed cats. Or oh, hmm. Google says there are approximately one million rabbits as household pets in the UK, with one one point one six percent of households having at least one. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of bunners. I like my pets to have room and would be and would be scared of bunner a bunny, sorry, would be cramped. Yeah, I really have no idea how to um Rabbits are the, mo the third most popular pets in many countries, but they are low status and people only just discovering are only just discovering that you can take them to the vet at all. Oof. 60 million peeps, so that's almost two in a... Wow. Bunnies and cats go to one side of the vets with you. Yeah, not a surprise there though. Whoa, 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 what's happening? Ah, ah, where's my scut towel? <laughs> the ink is blopping. Okay, note to self, if you can't really pause with this one. <laughs>
The vast majority still keep them in small cages out back, but fortunately the concept of free-roaming rabbits is catching on. I think another thing that comes with free-roaming rabbits is that people don't know how to rabbit-proof their spaces, so... Curse of the technical pens. Why are you doing that? I can't cut all my fish, but if I could, they'd have free room. Well, I'm sure you keep them in a like an, a nice space where they have a lot of place to uh, uh, fish around, swim around. They are wonderful pets, but never trust anyone that tells you they are dominions in any way. I would extend that to. Um, that uh, that that applies to all pets regardless of what the pet is because i don't think there is such a thing as a low maintenance maintenance pet like even even fishies you have to clean up their aquarium and and feed them and make sure they're healthy and they don't have any kind of issues and My hedgehog had a home that was a tank with bedding and all the stuff he needed, but when I was home, it was really... Oh, that sounds adorable! A hedgehog! Oh. I just got rid of my 75 gallon freshwater aquarium. We were reflooring my kitchen where the tank... Oh, after all. Yeah, that's that that sucks, Mikey. We went from five fish and one snail to five fish and so many snails. But I like them and they're cleaning the tank, so for now I'm excited. Ah. Yeah, I should have started on this side of the page, but I'm doing some pretty organic lines, so it's fine. Sorry, that was my head on the camera. I have a really small 3 liters tank with sea monkeys and they are portable and super easy to care for and lovely to spy on. <laughs> and once the algae got established, it takes care of itself. I just like to give this the snacks. Uh, hey, Otto! Hello! Sorry, I'm late, lost track of time. Oops. What were you doing?
cross stitch. Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. You told me that's the that's the evening thing. I saw your fabric poll for your pre next quilt top, and I'm really excited to see it happen. Now, I don't know how quickly this dry though. Okay, let's doodle something on the next page over. Could you please... Oh, uh... I was saying that you... Uh, I saw the fabric pole for your next quilting project. And I'm excited to see, like, progress on it. Like, that's gonna be really fun to um, follow with you. Words, English, how, <laughs> what am I saying? <coughs> oh yeah, it's gonna be so different. Yeah, definitely. Did, um, did you choose the fabric or? I gotta show you something. So my super awesome pink sewing machine came with four bobbins, which is nice, but definitely you sort of attribute a color to each bobbin. One black, one um, kind of beige, one white, and then you have one left. And once you've filled up the one that's left, well, you're kind of out of bobbins. But I saw these and I was like, well, Sorry about that. They're pink and they have little sakura on them, on the lid. They're so perfect. I'm so excited to try them out. <laughs> They're so cute. I was like, oh, that's perfect. I'm glad you guys agree that there are cute bobbins. <laughs> I'm trying to accessorize everything in pink to match the machine, so... <laughs> to have a kind of a, a photo dump of uh, fish pets uh, in the pets channel on the Discord server. Like we see a lot of cats and dogs and we see Greta, but that's how I got a real fish tank. Hubby was buying me a larger tank for the sea monkeys and it was an 11 gallon tank. <laughs> Not eleven liter. Oh no, a, a gallon is four liter, right? Is that it? Because that's that's gonna be really big. <laughs> Your sea monkeys are going to be so happy. <laughs> They're going to be so prolific in there. 
I'm always afraid to share pics of my isopods because I think they are super adorable and hubby and most people do not agree. That's like um, pill bugs, right? They've done amazing in my terrarium. It's such yeah, they do really good in in the um, in terrarium. We have a friend that has a crested gecko. Yum. Cretons, tu as un crested gecko? Okay, fine. Uh, a crested gecko. And um, yeah, she has she has um, roommates in the shape of uh, isopods in her tank. And it's always funny to spy them at the bottom, doing their eyes of body things. What happens to my finger? Um, my hands are really dry, and my cuticles are doing weird shit right now. So they keep on breaking, and I keep on having, like, hangnails. And, and it's just really annoying, and I keep, like... Um, like, you know, you pick something up in your pockets, and... Um, it kind of rips out the, the, the hangnails and all that, so that's why I have the, 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 the small band-aids. And since I always wash my hands, I have to replace these often. So let me show you the most amazing thing. If you are prone to having like holes in your fingers like me, this is amazing. So it's a box of 500 uh, bandages. They're not sterile, but who cares? They're latex-free, which is great because I react to latex. And it's just like a, a dispenser roll, an infinite dispenser roll in there. So whenever I, I happen to find a hole in my fingers, I can just patch it. If I wash my hands and it gets all wet, I can remove it, patch a new one. And this, this, this is my first boss and it's been going for months and it's still like halfway full. I love these. <laughs> 500, yeah. The, the, the amazing and there's these little rounds so they're perfect for all kinds of like holes in, in fingers and whatnot like my my thumb keeps cracking here and this one too so I often have to put one like on the tip and it's not it doesn't hold for long and it's not amazing but it it's serviceable at least I'm not putting blood everywhere here ah. <laughs> I'd love to have geckos what kind of gecko would you get? Could you handle having to deal with the the isopods in the tank and all the bugs and that? Yeah, I get it. I do that too. It's so annoying. Like it regularly happens that I'm like I, I'm like doop de doop de doo I do things and then at some point I'm like, huh. Well there's a like it, it, it stings a bit on my finger and I look. And it split and it bled, and I'm like, well, now did I just put blood everywhere? I have to go back and see if I didn't like put blood on all the towels and whatnot. <gasps> I've been so close to trying triops. What is that? So, 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 what do we, Mr. E, things have followed so far? We really like it. We've just uh, finished watching the third episode last night, which is the one you you felt was slow. I didn't really notice. I thought it was fine. But it's really funny, and I really like... Like, there's kind of three... Well, now two sort of storylines happening at the same time. And... The one with the knight and the squire really cracks me up. My hedgie ate live bugs and it took time, but Mum mode eventually activated and I got through it. I guess it really depends on the types of bugs. But yeah. 
geckos are really funny. They're they're so uh, not clever. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love the humor in the show. Yeah, it's really dark humor, but it's really funny. And the yeah, the knight and the squire really crack me up. At this point, anyway. I don't know if I've passed the point where you you felt it was particularly gory. But it is really gory and it's kind of cracks me up because it's over the top. And I keep being like, ugh! <laughs> I feel like that kind of stuff is easier to deal with when it's in this kind of setting rather than like horror or... Though, mind you, the... What's it called? Paranormal activity movies? The really silly, like, uh, oh, you didn't die, so now death is gonna catch up to you in the most absurd and gory way. So that's... That's that's kind of funny. I haven't got to the scene when even I looked away. <laughs> All right, well, that's gonna be funny. It's so it's 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 the same level of dark humor in my opinion than uh, in Breaking Bad <laughs> when the <clears throat> the 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 dead body they're trying to decompose in the bath goes through the floor. It's it's the same kind of like this is so gross and so absurd and kind of funny at the same time. <laughs> Paranormal activity movies. It's all about soundtrack. Makes you all stressed out. It's not. No, it's really not scary. I need to swap some guppies. Ooh, I watched uh, Event Horizon. I know we talked about it during last stream, and I was like, oh, well, now that I'm kind of good with horror movies, I should really watch it, and I did. And it's kind of the same thing. It's jump scares and gore, but when you think about it, it's it's not really all that scary I'm trying to think of another thing to draw I should have written next to my thumbnails uh, what photos inspired the sketches because it's not necessarily easy to find them out again. It's really a good story with some really horrifically gray moments that are mostly less than one second shots. I really like the premise of it. I think the premise is really cool, but there's a couple of things that are really wonky about it. And Sam Neill scares the bees knees off. <laughs> and that movie, yeah. Did you see, uh, speaking of Sam Neill, did you see Hunt for the Wilder People? Because if you enjoy Sam Neill as an actor, he's really good in that one. And it's not a scary movie, it's a fun movie. Not, but saw it in my list recently. I would, I would move it up the list. It's a Taika Waititi movie, and it's a really good one.
We need something funny. It is mostly funny. Been a lot of stressful shows recently. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. We finished Three Body Problem. I have to poke you on um, Discord to ask you about the, the physics, physics thing that bothered you because I'm not a physics person, so I'm curious to know. But yeah, Hunt for the Wilder People is really, really nice. It took me a long time to get to it because I was like... Argh. Then I watched it and I was like, oh. Oh, I'm a dumbass. This is really good. How was the true body problem in the end? It was okay. So I think one of my favorite horror movies, The Mouth of Madness. Can you please crazy really, really well? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> also has Elena Bonham Carter as Mariana Fay. I'm not a big Helena Bonham Carter fan. Because of the connection to um the dude What's his name? It's not Tim Curry, that's <laughs> someone else. What's his name? Tim Burton. Rutger Hauer as King Vortigern. That sounds amazing though. Miranda Richardson. Wow, you you <laughs> you you sound like you really like that. <laughs> I mean, you're able to to call out all the actors like that. If only you could see the things I've seen with your eyes. That's what I always hear. <laughs> It's my favorite Sam Neill thing. Well, I haven't seen a lot of Sam Neill things, so it's hard to have an opinion on it. Like, which one would be my favorite? Because I, I don't have a very wide pool to, to choose from. But personally, so far, it's the Hunt for the Wilder People movie. I was terrified of Jurassic Park when I was a kid. In third grade, we had to write a report about an influential woman, and everyone chose their mom, grandma, and I chose Isabella Rossellini. <laughs> oh.
My all-time scariest movie is Dead Ringers, Jeremy Irons. I don't think I've seen this one. I used to have a lot to be scared super easily in movies, but I don't know what happened in the last five years, but now I'm like, yeah, bring bring the horror stuff. <laughs> Okay, so I have no idea who Isabella Rossellini is. I'll have to check it later. Isabella Rossellini. Have you ever seen Death Becomes Her? Well, the thing is, is maybe I have to check what it is in French. If if it is the movie I think it is, yeah, I've seen it. Death Becomes Her. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> La mort vous va bien. La mort vous va bien. Oh, she. She's the one that sells them the potion. Oh, damn, that's been a really long time since I saw that uh, movie. Oh, Mikey, thank you so much for coming by. I hope you have a great day. Death Becomes Her is such a funny movie. I was excited to see Cal McLaughlin in Fallout. It took me a good moment to recognize him.
this pole, pole of treaties, and that really, <laughs> I really like the old Dune movie. It's it's bonkers. I tried watching Twin Peaks, but I really couldn't get into it, so I know he's in there. He's like the main character and all that, but... Abby just would not believe that the OG was a divin. <laughs> Why the, the 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 Dune movie? Why would he not believe that? It it's it's it's. I mean, it's not exactly surprising. <laughs> Because I've made him watch the whole library and that one is so tame. Well, sort of. What, Dune is tame? Dude, if that's the tame one. I think the first time I saw it, I had zero interest in it, so I didn't register any of it, but eventually I read Dune and I saw the movie again and I was like, Wow. Same with Stand, Stand By Me and The Green Mile. Stand By Me is hard to associate with Stephen King. Haha, <laughs> Tiny Will Wheaton in that one. <laughs> <sighs> Oh no, I'm going to sneeze again. <laughs> Sorry. Back to my for to get a cup of tea. Ooh. Are you still in your um, all grey kick?
Oh yes, this one is decaf. Oh, yeah, hopefully. It's too late for a real caffeine. Got some really nice rebus or gray. Ooh, that sounds yummy. That's a good one. Was worried it wouldn't be very strong, but it's lovely. <laughs> you like it, you prefer when the old gray is like a punch in the face. Most of the time, I like what they call builder's tea over here. What is it? There is the kind of person here who dunks their tea bags three times and then throw it. That's basically hot water at that point, right? I apologize for sniffing, sniffling. Allergies officially started today. <laughs> I took some allergy meds, but I am three tea bags and oops, did I forget to take it out after five? <laughs> so it's basically like thick. <laughs> it's it's tea puree at that point. <laughs> Do you add anything into it, like milk or sugar or? The tea company that Dan directed me to, they are really well flavored teas and don't have to look like bonkers with tablespoons of loose tea. I like tea just about any way it comes, but usually a little honey. Ooh. I like uh, unsweetened oat milk in my tea.
Okay, so follow up question to everyone, including Scout, apparently. This is Buffy. But if you have coffee, what's your opinion on putting honey in coffee? Dad uses honey and coffee. Isn't it isn't it weird <laughs> conceptually? Although what what color is is that mix of, of flavors? But if it's liquid sugar I'm gonna add it, it's gonna be maple syrup. Yeah, same. I can I can visualize like it makes sense. Maple syrup and coffee, that works. Honey and coffee, I don't know why, but it, it just doesn't it doesn't gel properly. Yeah, it really doesn't gel properly. There is a wee smell to honey sometimes and I feel like coffee makes that stand out more. So I'm seeing like salted edges on both flavors. So they don't... they don't... There's really something in the flavor profile of coffee and the flavor profile of honey in general that I... Feels weird. <laughs> You'd really have to go for a specific coffee and a specific honey that could possibly work together, but... Or sandpaper feeling. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, like, I can totally see a coffee and honey pro might be able... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's a, a very niche, specific case of, like, someone being able to pair these flavors together, but it's just, yeah, I... Like a deep chocolatey coffee, and you'd have to get a honey that is not too floral, right? Like a, maybe a lighter honey? Honey is so good on bread with like butter or margarine. Such a nice combo. Yeah, I can see floral coffees. Pearl honey and acidic floral coffees. Is that what you mean? Maybe like a cashew honey. I have no idea what's a cashew honey. Um, I'm familiar, like, if I'm thinking of a low 
local really lightweight honey I'm gonna go for clover it's usually light yellow it's a really light taste and if I want something a bit more robust I'm gonna go for goldenrod or perhaps uh, wildflowers or buckwheat I think is quite Floral honey with acidic floral coffees. Well, I mean, acidic floral coffees are nightmarish to begin with. <laughs> how, how do you like your heartburn? <laughs> I mean... be honest on the weird flavors we have some sugar-free drops for sweetening coffee yogurt to try that is butter biscuit flavor and hope me hubby told me it was speculous flavor and used it for a month <laughs> but what does it taste like does it taste like butter biscuit or speculous speculous And a half, a month and a half before I realized that it's actually Ritz. <laughs> Is it actually Ritz, like like branding Ritz f cracker flavored? Because if so, that's hilarious. It's like, like you wouldn't put a lemon flavoring or orange flavoring in coffee. I feel like, oh, oh, oh no, sorry. <laughs> Can't do it. Guppy side quest done. I don't mind honey in my coffee, but it's not a marriage made in heaven. Like tea and honey is a very good way to put it. Like when you open the bottle, it smells like buttered popcorn. That's so weird. How did we come up with these weird flavored things? <laughs> but think salt makes coffee taste better. But, um, no salt, salt. Are we gonna get into another flavor fight? We make a lot of heather honey here. I really enjoy it. I really hope to try it someday. We, we I don't think we have a lot of heather here. I'll, I'll have to Google it later to see what's the French name of it and if it's a plant I'm familiar with. But yeah, we have... Um, I've seen clover honey... Um, like apple blossom honey is is quite like apple tree blossom honey is quite common too. Wildflowers, goldenrod. We often have like a blueberry flower tea, possibly. I'm tr I'm really trying to think of the the local flavors of honey. Because, I mean, why buy honey that is not local? I really don't... I can't fathom that. A tiny, tiny bit of salt in your coffee makes you taste... No! <laughs> no! It just tastes like salted coffee! Sorry. <laughs> we should do a Heather honey swap. Ooh! Ooh, that sounds lovely. Should but remember how this card is when I tried to send you licorice. Oh no! Not salt water coffee, but like you'd create nutmeg but less. Like MSG for coffee! <laughs> Oh, 
That's so funny. Have you tried crackers from Kurt Wright and Butler? Wow. You'd be hard put to find a name brand that sounds more British than that. I got gifted some and the cheese flatbread, their name for crackers, is addictive posh Ritz cracker. I mean, Ritz on their own are already addictive. Oh my god, those are on the can't buy them unless we are prepared to be licking the tin trying to get the last crumb. those crackers. I have a tin of their fudge sitting next to me. Just a tin. <laughs> oh my gosh, if it's fudge, it, it cannot live that long. So I don't want to really dwell on to politics, but I want to quickly mention that I saw a video from uh, Rishi Sunak, and that dude is is bonkers. He's he's not right. <laughs> it was one of the most evil speech I had ever heard, and that was really shocking. I'm so sorry you guys are stuck with that loser. People say that we don't have good food here, but they just haven't looked hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot our angry I always get. Yeah, we always end up talking about food in one way or another. I had some really delicious uh, grilled meat yesterday from the Vietnamese place. Along with Suella Devil. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> yeah, I was I was floored. Seriously, I was listening to that Rishi Sunak speech, and I was I was flabbergasted. Like I cannot believe no one sat him down before he delivered that speech, and we're like, bro, no. <laughs> Stella Deville. Is her is her last name really Deville? No way. Oh, Suella Braveman. Braverman. Aww. Oh man, yeah. There are some really extra politicians in UK and US at the moment. We're not... Yeah, I mean it's it's all over the place, but yikes. Suella Deville is really amazing. <laughs> Subtract, but how fabulous is the movie Cruella? I haven't seen it. I adore the movie, I just can't watch it much. Oh. She set up the deal to ship people to the middle of nowhere and for them to arrive in. <laughs> how? How? 
Why? How did we end up with these losers? Like the people do the most awful stuff and and it looks like it doesn't even hit them just how, how awful it is. And you're like, what? Who? How? What? <laughs> oh my god, Emma Stone, Emma Thompson, Liberty and Fashion. <laughs> Oh, there is the, the show, the, the Liberty Department Store in there. Ooh. Ooh. Although you watch a lot of movies. <laughs> this is just an observation. <laughs> oh, it's super flashy. Oh, no. I hope that one day we'll end up having TVs that have modes to kind of control that kind of stuff. That would be really cool. Like you can um, activate a setting in the TV that will make it so if there are flashes, it will like control them. That would be really handy. That'd be a really good use of AI. I wish AI would give us the... Yeah, exactly! That. That would be amazing. That would be a good use of AI. As a tool. <laughs> it's a tool. We can use it for good things. It just does not... It doesn't replace creativity. <gasps> it's been a long while since I had to join online meetings. I had forgotten about people with the stroke. Mine's mic up the screen. Oh, crappy cameras. Don't forget the crappy audio. Like, if someone has a really awful camera, I can live with it. But if the audio is awful, it's draining. And being an elitist, but if your camera is making me feel like I'm gonna be sick, turn it. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Audio quality is one of the reasons that I can't stand any kind of call-in show. I can't I can't do like any any amount of time with someone with like uh, audio from the 90s like no way like calling on their stupid home phone while someone is chainsawing stuff right next to them. Has anyone else noticed that uh, notice if they are facetiming someone where they're using an iPad to talk to you, that sometimes their camera moves around as if it's trying to track something. Ugh. Why? No one wants that by default. Ugh. I mean, if you're gonna have that kind of setting by default, at least make it super easy to turn off. Come on. <laughs> like, really basic stuff. <laughs> it... I feel like it should always be super easy to adjust the settings so that something is at the base level, you know?
because it's my mom, I can't just tell her to go into settings and see if something needs to be turned off. That's a really painful experience I don't need. <laughs> ah. If people could learn just like three easy things about sun and camera, 5% of all it would be solved. Which, which three things? I can, I can sort of work my way with the camera, but audio is really difficult for me to figure out. kind of stuck now because I've taped down my uh, pages <laughs> so I can't switch page <laughs> I'm still trying to convince my mother that she does not need a fax machine anymore <laughs> hmm. who was I talking to about fax machine recently I wonder if it was my dad who was telling me that in some places they still use fax machines for sending like data because it it cannot be intercepted or hacked whereas if you send it through the internet someone could like grab the info and you would never know my camera at work has only been on twice since january and both times was with my other laptop in front of it <laughs> because I couldn't sell myself something that's amazing <laughs> but no she holds on to her dear dysfunctional fax machine and makes me try to fix it from the UK through the magic of the internet which it is not connected to that's amazing my parents are faxers <laughs> How the heck can it not be hacked when you can wire it up? Well, I, I think... I think it might be trickier to do. I don't know. Like, light should be in front of you, not behind you. Yep. Wear headphones. Yep. Learn to fiddle with the gain control in your make. Okay, 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 okay. But yeah, I've often seen the advice and I agree with it that if you plan on making content for like YouTube or something, then you have to prioritize how you um, upgrade your, your toolkit. Uh, good audio is the first thing to get going, then good video. Because if the visual is not great, unless you're really showcasing visual things, that's super important to see sharply and well. But yeah, microphone first. Microphone, very first thing. Then lighting and camera, in my opinion. Because you might have the best visual quality video ever if the audio is dog shit. No one is gonna stay to watch that. Which is a bit of a pain in the ass because audio is really hard to work with. I am not good with that. I can, I can do the visual aspect of it, no problem, but the audio aspect of things is really difficult. I would disagree with camera being a priority nowadays, as most phone are good enough. Well, it's no longer a priority then. Is that what you mean? You don't really need to bother with it, because you can use your phone and the camera is good. I feel like camera uh, phone audio is quite decent too. Absolutely audio first always. <laughs> And removing most background noise is so simple when you learn it. No, no, it's fine, Otto, it's fine. Sometimes I ask these questions because I'm trying to keep track of, of all the stuff we say in the chat while all the stuff that comes up in my head and it's easy for me to get lost and I don't want to 
like appear like I'm not paying attention. But yeah, I mean, it's really funny. Uh, phone cameras are really good and webcams are really bad. Like, I'm, I'm always surprised when I look at webcams, they're all terrible. They will say stuff like, oh, 1080p, 1080p, but it's like, oh, only if you take a photo with it. And you're like, no one buys a webcam to take photos with it. What? <laughs> we did not apologize. And I'm Canadian, so we're kind of screwed on that. <laughs> it's going to be way too polite. <laughs> Uh, I have no idea how you pay attention to chat, engage with us, and get any art done. Um, well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. If you guys think about, uh, like, ages ago when we were all in school, I always felt it was easier to pay attention to what the teacher was, like, mentioning and teaching us about if I could draw at the same time. So I feel like drawing is the one that I can more easily put on autopilot. And yeah, following chat. I think the actually the hardest bit of all of it is to express myself in English. And we all go off on our own tension. <laughs> I like a busy chat. I really like it. I think it's really fun. And it's the one reason why I make the live streams is to be able to interact with uh, like-minded people. And talk about food and to share, you know, experiences and all that. That's a long time ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But it was always a thing, and I would hate it, because, like, I would doodle in class. And if the teacher... You kind of you kind of had to hide it from the teacher. Because if the teacher caught you doodling, they would, like, reprimand you for it. And even if you tried to tell them, like, that's, that's why I'm able to pay attention to what you're saying. It's because I'm doodling. That was a long time ago, so I don't even think, like, ADHD was in... A known thing back then. It was just starting to be a thing. So people had no idea that attention uh, presents itself in in a bunch of ways, you know. So it would be like notebook, sketchbook, teacher talking in the front and only because like if I'm not sketching, if I'm looking at the teacher, I'm gonna get super distracted and stop paying attention to what they're saying but if I can doodle at the same time uh, it it sort of keeps me more able to listen to what the teacher is saying the amount of times I got in trouble for doodling in class in class or meeting and having to explain that if I stop you <laughs> would I be from <laughs> I have to remember that next time if it ever happens again And the, the the thing that would really, like, I can kind of see from their perspective, looking at that class of teens that don't really care, don't look like they're caring about what you're trying to teach them, can maybe be infuriating, but doodling in class doesn't bother anyone. It's not noisy, it's not clunky, it doesn't take up a lot of space, like, it's really non-invasive. So they should really let kids doodle in class. <laughs> ah. Talking a bit about pain just to be a bit topical. Oh, is the stream dead? Don't die. Don't die. Uh-oh. about about okay okay maybe it's just my preview that's buffering 
I'm switching colors in my FLGS. What's that? What's a FLGS? Doodling while I talk to you and my headphones are for your safety. <laughs> I can see, yeah, I can see the chat, no problem, but like my preview. <laughs> meow, meow, meow. <laughs> Doop de doop, doop de doop. Let's let's move stuff around. <laughs> Agree, have especially if this year's doing fine in school, including yeah, that's the whole thing. Like, how are my grades? My grades are okay. Let me draw, please. Come on. Oh, it's my stupid feed that's buffering. Like, my preview of the... Yeah. Okay, so it's almost end of stream. Do I have a couple of other show-and-tell things that I can sort of feature in here, like cool things? I have a fun book. Friendly local game stuff. Oh! Oh, that sounds fun! I love that. Hold on, can I... Can I see the stream so that I know what's happening? Okay. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Let me move this to the side or somewhere. Okay, first of all, like, how freaking cute is the art? And the flaps, it's because it's it's a book that has these flaps that you can lift. Well, I mean, try to. And open up to see what's under the thing. Oh, that's awesome, Liz! I love that! Oh, Wargaming Mini! So yeah, so you can open up and see what's in the things, like in her backpack, what's in her backpack, and um, kind of have to be at an angle like, but the fireplace. <laughs> I don't know why this one is so difficult to grab onto. So it's it's all like that, and it's like it's twelve days before Christmas, so it's about twelve pages, and each each page is kind of thick because it's this layering of cardboard to have the flaps going. And it's this super cute cat family, and I was like, oh my gosh! <laughs> you know, sometimes you see book and they have your name on them. Well, this is one of them. <laughs> saw that and I was like, I have to kind of look into this. And the artist is really, really talented. Her name is um, uh, Eunyoung Seo. She has an Instagram and she posts drawings on there and it's it's often cat. Cats and cats and cats. So I was like, oh my gosh. Aww. I was sidetracked, but I was feeling down the other day. I got Chat GPT to write me a short happy story about a silk pop, and it was the most. <laughs> oh, that that's really cute. That's <laughs> see. I think my favorite part of AI like that is the way people find uses for it. Yeah, the eggs turn into. Uh, uh, like bubbles or um, <laughs> we call them uh, Christmas balls <laughs> in French. The bol de Noël. What's the flower gonna turn into? <laughs> These 
Chinese parents are troopers, though. They have four kids. Can you imagine having four kids? I can't. I sure can't. Yeah, I can open up the Christmas card. It's empty. Open up the bag. It's, it's really fun. Not for kids, for kittens. Yeah, but in the context of their life, it's 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 like having kids, right? Look at all of these! Look at the weasels! They're so funny! So, yeah, that, that's... Uh, <coughs> the snow duck has a boot <laughs> for a bee. Yeah, I'd have four kittens if I could, but I'm not sure it's exactly the same. I have to show you. There's a page where they're in a stable. And the the ponies are super cute, but also they, they really drew someone picking up the the horse dung. Which I don't know why it cracked me up. Two days this one is a big spread. And then Christmas Eve. And that's the end of the book. I have... Uh, hold on. Oops. I thought these... Anyway, so this is one of the artists that I really like. I, I kind of have a small, very curated selection of a kid's book for the the illustration and the illustrators and this is another illustrator that I really like I don't really know how to say her name it's Kin or Shin Neng but she also works a lot with ink and watercolor and it, oh, sorry about that it's really beautiful like this one is more like contemporary stuff but I have one of her books it's called Clover and it's it's really really nice it has a lot of super beautiful landscapes like this or like the cover and it's all ink and watercolor and I'm like oh Oh, that's so pretty. I think this one lives in the same city I do. No Christmas Day. Um, nope, just Christmas Eve. Because that's the last page. It's a bit of an odd ending, isn't it? But I guess that's something you can, perhaps the, uh, the angle is to, you know, have this with the kid and this is the, you know, you finish the book right before Christmas. You look at each page, like, on the corresponding day. I don't know. It's not like I got it for the story. <laughs> I got it for the um, the illustrations in it. Cat Family Christmas. Well, it's not Cat Family Christmas, really. It's Cat Family 12 Days Before Christmas. So, yep, that's it for a uh, book show and tell. <laughs> Sorry, nine days of Christmas is too late. I agree. Is it really? I mean, mommy and daddy are writing Christmas cards. They send love and fishy kisses. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> yeah, writing letters to Santa Claus nine days before Christmas is not gonna get there in time. Uh, 
but you know it's a beautiful and adorable book I might need to get myself a copy there I think there are two books of the cat family yet there's a Christmas one and I think there's another one like same artist and everything But yeah, it's the kind of stuff that kind of makes me happy to look out. And I find them to be super inspiring. Like, to see all of this. All of this work, all of this, you know, setup. Sometimes seeing someone do a thing that you'd like to do kind of makes it more um, attainable. Because you're like, oh, if, if it can be done, perhaps I can do it too. Anyway. Cat family at the museum. I think that might be it. I'm waiting for that one to be available somewhere on, on sale or discounted or something. <laughs> but um, if I if I happen to catch it on sale somewhere, I might get it too. Because I really, like, this is something that I feel is relevant to my interest a lot and to what I do. And in that sense can be a good reference when I feel out of touch with uh, reality. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Plus, it's super fun to flip all the little doors and see what's in there. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Tuna kisses. Tuna. Tuna is still there. Alright, guys. I need a break. I need to drink all the water. And, um... Yeah, sort out my stuff. My mess. So, thank you so much, guys, for being here today. Um, I hope you had a fun time. I really appreciated seeing you, all of you. And um, it's always fun and always a good chat and a good time. And I hope you have a great week and we should be able to see each other next weekend. Uh, no, not next weekend. Next weekend, I think I'm not going to be able to stream. Bummer. So maybe the one after that. <laughs> anyway, um, if you want to know more you can send me a message on the discord i'll try to uh, keep the info available somewhere i don't know anyway more of that to come and in the meantime have a great week and see y'all in the next one bye bye